Hello and welcome to our channel. In this video, we are going to talk about some tips and tricks about Pixelorama that you may not know about. So, tip number one is that you can uh, rearrange the user interface as much as you want. To do that, you first have to enable movable panels. To enable them, you can either press F9 on your keyboard or go to the window menu and click on movable panels. As you can see, each panel now has a tab on top of it. To move a panel around the user interface, you can click on its tab and move it around to which place you want to move it. For example, you can move the timeline over here. And you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can move this here, you can move uh, this here. You can also make a panel a floating window. To do that, you can go to these three vertical dots next to the panels tab and click on make floating. Now, this panel has become a floating window. To make it back into a panel, you just have to press X. Now, if you have single window mode disabled from your preferences, the windows will be native operating system windows and you can move them even outside of the main Pixelorama window. If I restart the program and I make the timeline a floating window again, as you can see, the window is now a native operating system window and it can be moved even outside the main Pixelorama window. Again, press X to turn it back into a panel. To reset a layout, you can go to the window menu, Layout, Reset, Default. Note that this works only on default layouts. If you want to make a new layout, you can go to the window menu, Layout, Add Layout, and choose a name for it. Let's call it a Video. And now you can rearrange the UI. And if you go to the window menu, layout, if you switch back to the default layout and then back to video, your changes will be as you left them. So tip number two is layer effects. Pixelorama has non-destructive layer effects. For example, let's say we have layer eight and we want to apply a layer effect on it. To do that, we can go to this effects button right here and then choose add effect we can choose an effect that we want to apply. For example, let's say we want to apply uh, invert colors. As you can see, the little ship right here has inverted colors. And we can quickly turn it off and on again like this. And we can even uh, delete it. And it's like this effect never got applied. This is what non-destructive means. The layer effects do not permanently apply the changes to the pixels of the image unless you click on apply effect. Like for example, if you click apply, then now the image effect is permanently applied to the pixels. And if you draw, the pixels will be normal. However, if you don't have it applied and it's just active, every pixel you draw will be automatically inverted. Another cool effect is the outline effect. This effect automatically creates an outline around your image. And if you draw, an outline gets automatically generated around each pixel that you draw. Now, let's say that you want to apply a layer effect to the entire image. To do that, you can create a group layer like this and make all of the layers children of that group. And now, let's say that you want to create a gradient map for the entire image. You can go to Add Effect, Color, Gradient Map, and as you can see, the entire image is now black and white. And of course, you can edit the colors as much as you want. You can add new colors and change them move them around, change the interpolation, and of course you can choose from some presets. One of the presets available to you, the first one, essentially comes from the two chosen colors that you currently have. For example, I have these two green colors chosen here, and this uh, gradient is made from these two colors. That's it for tip number two. Tip number three, you can automatically change layers by holding Ctrl Alt and clicking anywhere on the canvas. For example, if I hold Ctrl and Alt, you can see that wherever I hover the mouse, an outline is being drawn around the current uh, hover layer. And if I click on it, as you can see here, the layer is being automatically changed. This way, you can easily and quickly change layers without interacting with the timeline at all. Remember, I'm holding Ctrl and Alt. If I let go, the outline changes and you can get back into drawing. 
Tip number four. Usually, we work with small canvases when drawing pixel art. This causes some issues when we want to share our artwork in social media. For example, they may appear blurry or way too small. An easy way to fix this is when exporting by going to File Export. You can change the resize uh, value on the slider right here and make it uh, way bigger. A good size for this would be probably 400%. Now, when you click export, the exported image will be 400% larger. Tip number five. Let's say we have an isometric tile like right here. This one is 64 by 32, but any size will work. And we want to ensure that it tiles seamlessly. Pixelorama has a setting called Tile Mode, which can help you do exactly that. You can enable it by going to the View menu, Tile Mode, and let's say we enable Tile in both axes. As you can see, this essentially repeats the canvas 8 more times. Now, this is great for rectangular tiles, but it's not so helpful for isometric tiles. To fix this, we can go to the View menu again, and this time click on Tile Mode Offsets, and click on the isometric preset. Now, this is way more helpful for asymmetric tile pattern creation. However, if you attempt to draw, you can see that the result is not quite what we want, right? Now, we can fix this. We have to go again to the view menu and to tile mode offsets, and this time click on this masking button right here. And now when we draw, much better. We can draw some pixels right here, and because of the tile mode, we can ensure that this tiles seamlessly. Now, of course, I'm not the best pixel artist out there, so you have to excuse my, uh, my bad art. <laughs> I'm sure you will do a much better job than me. Tip number six. Let's say you want to replace one color with another. You can easily do that using the bucket tool and under fill area, select similar colors. Now, when you apply the bucket tool over a pixel with a specific color, you can see that all pixels of the same color get changed to that color that you chose. You can do that over many cells as well. For example, let's say we want to select all of these uh, four frames of the idle tag. And now we apply the bucket tool again. And as you can see, all pixels of the same color in these frames have been changed. Tip number seven, linked cells. Let's say that you want to add a background to this little animation. You can first create a new layer move it down like this, and you can rename it to something like background. Now, you can of course go one by one and add the background, or you can select all of them with shift and click and create the background. Now, this is great, but what if you want to make changes to that background? You have to make the same change to all of the cells. Luckily, there is an easier way for you to do this. Select all of the cells, right click on them and select link cells too. Now all of the cells are linked. This essentially means that they share the exact same image data. When you make a change to one cell, all other linked cells will also receive that change. For example, let's say we draw some pixels. Again, excuse my bad art. If you play an animation, you can see that these changes get applied to all of the other linked cells. Tip number eight. You may have noticed that the animation tags right here have different colors. To change them, you can click on one and just change the color. You can also do that with layers as well. Right click on a layer, click on properties and change the color. Let's say a nice red one. Note that you also have to change the alpha value because by default it's set to zero. As you can see, the color gets applied to the layer in the timeline. You can even do that with individual cells as well. Right click on cell, click on properties, and again do the same thing you did before with layers. Change the alpha value again, and as you can see, the cell now has a nice green outline. You can also zoom with control and mouse wheel to make the cells bigger and smaller. You can also do that by going to the settings right here and change the cell size. Tip number nine, you can quickly change frames by holding control and using the arrow keys in your keyboard. For example, control and right changes to the frame that is on the right of the current chosen frame. 
keep holding it and you can quickly change between all frames of the animation. Similarly, Ctrl and left does the exact same thing but backwards. You can also use Ctrl up and down to change between layers. Now let's say that you want to do the same thing but instead stay in inside the bounds of an animation tag. To do that you can hold control and instead use the period and comma keys. Control and comma goes to the right frame but if you keep pressing it, it loops back to the first frame of the jump up tag. And you can go left with control and comma. Control left and right to move without taking the animation uh, tags into account and control period and comma to move while respecting the bounds of the animation tag. And finally, tip number 10. When you play an animation, you can see that it stays inside the animation tag. If you want to play the entire animation, you can go to the settings here and deselect the animation plays only on frames of the same tag. Now, if you stop the animation and run it again, you can see that the entire animation plays without taking into account the different animation tags. And these were the 10 tips that I wanted to show to you today. I hope that you learned something new and that this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.